So welcome back. Uh, I will make a quick apology that I haven't been able to do much wargaming because real life has a tendency to have uh, kicked me a couple of times and I've had to do other stuff. So being able to get in here and do stuff has been a bit difficult. I have prepped some stuff for a game, probably a solo game at some point. However, that's going to be coming in the future and I'm still not 100% sure when that one will happen. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to do another one of my videos. So the next one on the list was my World War I warships. So for this, the rules I use are Age of Dreadnoughts, Victory at Sea, which is essentially a the World War I version of the Victory at Sea rules. This is the original Mongoose one, not based on the one that Warlords do at the moment. So everything I've got is originally from Mongoose, which I think the current set of rules are in theory, just basically a, a slightly updated version of the Mongoose rules, but I've, I've a friend of mine has them, he plays as Italians with them, he's, he's quite happy with them, but he learnt to play with the copy I had, which was the original one, and he doesn't seem to notice much difference. Beginning then, we shall have a look at the High Seas Fleet warships that I have. You may notice there are some differences between the warships. However, they have all come from the same company. In this case, their company being... And it escapes my mind. Damn it. What's it called? Give me a moment. Wait, I remember now. It's Navwar. That's who uh, I got the ships from. Well, I should say I got these ships from my from my dad, but he got them from Navwar. Um, in fact, one second. No. The war spite I bought, the rest were hit, were his. And uh, now I have um, I've ended up with them. So here is my uh, World War One High Seas Fleet, the Royal Navy. You may notice that the Renown and the War Spite are very, um, are very busy looking on their decks. There seems to be a lot more to them. That's because they are definitely the World War Two versions, but because both ships were laid down in use during the First World War prior to the First World War, they are. I, I basically I use the models and I have cards written up for them so that I can run them as their World War One incarnations before they get their refits, which is the versions that you see. As you see, they have aircraft handling equipment and things like that. These are one in three thousands, he says. He mums and mutters to himself, trying to remember what they are. Uh, nice and simply painted up. The bases are literally just... Let me just flick that over so you can see it's, it's an old... Uh, hang on. So the bases on here are quite literally just old cards and things like that made of plastic card. Nice and simple. Don't need to spend much money on those because you can get them usually quite quickly and easily. So we have the, hang on. <clears throat> so starting at the rear of the line, we have War Spite in her World War One incarnation, HMS Tiger, HMS Indefatigable, which as you notice is not a is not a centerline warship. Though the Tiger is a centerline warship, the Indefatigable has um, guns on either on the, on its flanks. The Lion, ooh, I'm jumping too far. Looking at the screen and not looking where my. Uh, where the, where the camera is actually pointed. The Lion is a, it is a centerline ship with a gun in the middle. And then the Renown at the front, which is again, a centerline ship. I have the Monmouth, which is a armored cruiser. And then I will just quickly jump across and I will show you some of the sort of interesting. So these are cards that I made up for the game. I have these in both World War One and World War Two versions. The, as I said, again, I, I created this originally off World War One. I, I, I originally created this for Victory at Sea, which is the World War II version. The original version is Victory at Sea. Age of Dreadnoughts is the bolt. Uh, it's not bolt on. Sorry, it is the World War One basic World War One version. So with this, as you can see, I have the various. I had because I had to put World War One on it just so I didn't get them mixed up with their World War Two incarnations and things like that. So looking at so that's the. War Spite, I believe I'm looking at now. Yeah, so you can see it's got a few other little extra toys. For example, it has torpedoes and things like that mounted on it, which its later incarnation does not have. Very special rules and things like that for its 15 inch guns, etc. Uh, etc. Et and it is a Queen Elizabeth cast because it is. And we move across and we'll, start, we'll, we'll have a talk through with the using the Monmouth, I think, as the, as the base setup. So, ship name and its class. And the type of ship, in this case an armoured cruiser, I put a flag in for the various nations. Its speed is 6 inches, which means in the game it can move a six, up to 6 inches a turn. 
target is basically how hard it is or what your opponent needs in order to hit it pluses and pluses and uh, minuses affect that turning is in this case three points so this means that it can turn on the special turning dial that you get with the game special turning, it's, it's, it's the little template that you can use it can turn up to three points armor basically means it has a free plus save super ap and things like that will make that harder and again plunging fire will also make that harder the damage is how many how many points of damage it can take in total which is the top one crippled is then in, is grayed out because once it hits crippled you have to start seeing how many of its weapon systems uh command and control and things like that are still functional and if they aren't then you lose them as the ship's basically starting to come apart at the seams crew is again an abstract it's how many crew members an abstracted element of how, how big the crew is again this will be taken out by the damage to the ship as you every time you fire on a ship using the, these rules and you sort and you score a hit fire damage will take out a certain element of the crew and uh, the damage itself will be doing damage to the crew as you engage each other and then you have its weaponry so in this case it has a a turret with two six inch guns they are weak guns which basically just means that they can't hurt certain ships or they can't crit on against certain armored ships and it has an x turret at the rear we're also six inch guns the ranges of all of those things how many attack dice you have so how many dice you roll when you're making your attack and how many damage dice you roll for every successful hit then you have its port and starboard secondaries which are also, which are seven small, I think these would, these would be sort of smaller six inches, so I'd have to check, it's probably a bit, probably different guns. There's a casemate guns, and they are they are classified also as weak, but they're all individual guns. Tertiary guns will be things like two-pounders and things like that, which are um, very weak, but they're designed to take on uh, torpedo boats and things like that, and, and, uh, and ship, small ships. Port and starboard torpedoes. These are all the rules. Slow loading, just I believe in the in this version of rules. Once you get slow loading, it's essentially you get one. I could be wrong on this one. I think it's one is you one version read rejigs it so that it goes from it takes every second turn you get to fire them to you can fire them once or then you can fire them twice and then that's it. You take so long to load them that you're not going to get many rounds out of them. Special traits is flash up to nineteen seventeen, which essentially means if it gets hit in the turret, you could end up losing your cruiser. And poor subdivision is again means that when it takes a certain amount of da damage, it can end up taking extra damage because it is not a particularly well layered out ship. Quickly moving over, we'll have another look at the Queen Elizabeth class, war, sorry, the war sprite of the Queen Elizabeth class. So, this one in this case is a battleship. She is also of the Royal Navy. Speed is six inches. She has a target, which is quite high, of a five plus. She can also turn quite well, but is and her armor is also on a five plus. I'm ninety percent certain that's probably not. That probably should be better, but I could be wrong. So continuing where I left off, we have the War Spites card. A, hang on, we go. A, B, X, and Y turrets, port and starboard secondaries, tertiary, and then the torpedoes. With her special traits being an armored deck, which gives you uh, or nullifies certain elements of plunging fire. She has a directory from nineteen fifteen. So if you're playing a game in nineteen fifteen and nineteen sixteen and beyond, she. Um, has the ability to bring in her guns fire a little bit more effectively and tough which off the top of my head i can't remember but i think it's one of those ones where she can uh, certain critical hits are a bit harder to get in also i did double check the entrance for the queen elizabeth class warships they are all of five plus armor they have very in theory they have um quite light armor compared to their other warships and they also do have listings for the hood i do have the hood as a model with my world war ii fleet However, for whatever reason, I haven't gened up a card for it. So I could feel the hood. I don't know. Um, it's a weird one. So move, having finished with the high seas fleet, we move over to the Hoch Seaflot, or the, Kaiser, the Kaiserliche Marine. So here we have Wondertown, the Seedlitz, the Flinger. In the rear is an armoured cruiser, the Ruhr. And then light cruisers, Strasbourg. Stralsund, and the name is on the wrong side, Nuremberg, and Leipzig. Also for these, I have gend up cards for them. In this case, I didn't bother to put World War One on it. As you can see, the flag is slightly different to its World War Two incarnation. Again, the cards follow the very much the same thing. The name of the ship, the type of ship, 
class of ship, its nation, in this case being represented by a flag, its speed, its how, what, it, what you require to hit it on, how fast it can turn, what its armor level is, damage and so on. And these are actually quite well armored. Now I'm saying all this, I'm trying to remember, I think, I need, I think they aren't actually as well armored as I think they are. Though, I don't know, I may have to have a read for this and go, I'm probably looking at this the wrong way around. And then again, seeing as they're all, these are light cruisers, their armor is on 2+, plus, but I think it rapidly ends up becoming not that. Do you know what? I'm going to just double check that. I'm going to have a quick read. One moment. Right. Having quickly double checked the rules. Um, yeah. So target is what your opponent needs to hit you on. Or, and the armor is what your opponent needs or beats. So in this case, an armor of two plus is a very lightly armored ship because taking away sort of modifiers, you would be looking at needing two or better to do any damage to the Stiersburg. Whereas something like the, sorry, the war spite with an armor of five means your opponent needs five or better to do any damage to the ship. So it's actually very heavily armored compared to her sisters in the renowned Tiger, Indefatigable, and so on classes. So the other classes. That's my misreading because again, it, it's it's that weird thing of normally you need oh this is what you da, 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 da. no this is literally what your opponent needs. So in this case, it would be your opponent would hit you on a five and would penetrate your armor on three and above. Whereas here it would be, whoop, so here's the war spite, so we, we, you'd be hit on a five, and your armor would be penetrated on a five. So very tough armor, very hard to get through. Things like AP and Super AP make it easier, and weak guns, um, gen they, they can't cause critical. So if you roll a six, that's a critical, or the potential for a critical. So quickly moving back to the Kaiserliche Marine, so we have the Strasbourg, Leipzig, Stras and Nuremberg in their model form and their cards. Like little grey ships with many, many funnels because that's sort of stereotypically World War One. There's lots of funnels on warships. We then have the card for the like, card for the rune, an armoured cruiser with her AX turrets being 8.2 inch guns. So a little bit nastier than her equivalent in the Monmouth, which is running 6 inch guns. And then the Vondertan, and then our battle cruiser cards, which is the Vondertan, the Seedlitz. As you can see, I because I copied and pasted a lot of the stuff because it was just easier. I also tended to have a little bit of mess things up. <clears throat> so the Seedlitz in this case is quite well armoured. The Vondertan, medium decent armour, and the, the Flinger is also well armoured, particularly compared to their Royal Navy counterparts. And they also have their APs, casemates, guns a week, lots of torpedo bays, uh, lots of torpedo tubes. And then in this case, I because of the way the cards sometimes printed out, I had to sit down and rewrite it in. So they have directories and tough, directories and tough, and directories from 1917, so very late on for the Vondertan, and also tough. Whereas in this case with the Nuremberg, as an example, she is a light cruiser, so she gets the ability to agile, which means that she can turn twice in a turn. So she can turn once, and then at the end of the turn, she may turn again. See, so here we go with the Lion and her special abilities. So she has a directory from 1916 onwards, and from and she's flash up until 1917 so how again with flash it's basically you the potential that if you get a turret hit your ship may sink may end up sinking as the royal navy ships had a tendency to do when they got turret strikes so quickly going back over all of, again with the uh, kaiserliche marine and the hoch sea flotter they are all from navwar and very nicely done these are all ships that i have not myself purchased they were acquired from my father and I will leave it for the moment there and we'll see you in the next one if I'm running out of battery. Good day. Now that I've got the battery recharged I can finish off what I wanted to say. I am looking for a another set of World War One, World War Two naval rules. Not necessarily to replace the uh, what was it called the, the Mongo set but just to sort of give me a variety. So something else, maybe something a little bit more in depth, maybe something um, something that gives a bit more of a specific to the flavor to the flavor of the of the time period would possibly be the best way to describe it yeah i'll, I'll go with that that probably makes the most sense so if anyone has any recommendations please stick them down in the comments below yeah and i'll uh and wish you a good evening <laughs>